Yeah, sorry, water's a little bit too crazy, but you see the reflection, right? Yeah, so on a smooth surface or smooth-ish surface, as you get the reflection, you will also get reflection. You'll get a reflected, hmm, what color haven't I used? You'll get a reflected ray that goes roughly in this direction. So I can also describe the angle for this reflected ray. I guess I'll describe the same way I've been describing. This angle here, angle between the light ray and the surface normal. And this reflected ray, theta r. Does anyone here know intuitively how this relates to other things? Yeah, this angle of reflection is equal to angle of incidence. Right? That, like, you know, when you hear that, that sounds familiar, right? As if you've heard this somewhere, or it just makes intuitive sense that this theta naught is equal to theta r. Like, it sounds true. It's like somebody telling you uh, 1 plus 1 is equal to 2, or 1 plus 4 is equal to 5. And, um, like, you don't question it until you take a uh, linear algebra class where, you know, you're Field, not field, I'm forgetting the terms. You can define an algebraic system in a way. It's like a plus operation is plus and then modulo something. Then one plus four can be not five. If it's modulo three, then it'll be equal to whatever. Um, if someone asks you why, why is this true? Then that's where um, most people would uh, sort of be at loss for words. It's like, why should it be that whatever angle it came in, should it be the angle that it went out in? Conservation of momentum. Mm, why should it be conserved? I mean, it's interacting with the medium. The medium is very heavy. It can carry away whatever. Because um, you're, thinking of, you're thinking of a ball bouncing, right? But when a ball bounces, momentum isn't actually conserved, right? So um, I'm actually not going to do this part because I don't know, too long. Uh, I like the other one better. But I want to point you to the part of the textbook that does cover it. The part of the textbook that does cover it is who, I'm just not going to be able to say the name right. Huygens uh, principle. I don't know how to say the name right. Um, so this is the section of your textbook that describes um, a principle that you used for describing waves, uh, wavelets, and how you deal with that. And this principle can be used to, to describe, for example, propagation of a plane wave, and um, sort of where the law of reflection comes from. And all this picture is very complicated, which is why I don't really want to get into it. Read the textbook, however much sense it makes to you. It's great. 